Moshi moshi. Now that you know what an ellipse looks like and how it's constructed, just like the way we did on the board, right? We have two fixed points, right? And when we take a string and we connected our marker on the board, we stretched it out and we spun it around and we got this perfect ellipse, right? So again, an ellipse is a set of all points, or we can just say the locus of all points, a locus of points, the sum of whose distance from the two distinct fixed points, the distance from the two distinct points, right? This is a distance, distance. Uh, two fixed points is constant. It's different from a parabola because it's got two focus, which is known as facade, okay? All right, so we pulled in the string and we know for shizzle that this constant stayed constant. Remember, it stayed constant. Because I mean, how can we change this? It doesn't change, it cannot, because this is connected, right? These distances do not change as we spin this around, okay? So I want you to imagine this like here too. That means the D1 and D2 are on top of each other. Hmm, I wonder what that means, okay? Uh, let's see what else, um, okay. Um, so again, when we put this into words, that would be sum of distance, right? Between foci and a point, right? And a point on the ellipse, oh, it ellipse, okay, is fixed. Oh, the marker's kind of thick. Let me change that, okay? Oh, it's a little thick, okay? Some of the distances between the foci, the foci, okay, and the point along the ellipse is fixed. And when we actually take that, all those points, a collection of points, then it's going to create an ellipse, okay? Just like the parabola, it's probably not what you thought an ellipse was, but that's what it is, okay? All right, let's move on. All right, so we have here an ellipse, okay? And here are all its parts. Again, Ellipse has two different types of ellipses. One that looks like Mr. V's face, one that looks like Miss Chang's face, okay? One that's horizontal and one that's vertical. So again, this one is more like uh, Miss Chang's face and Mr. V's face would be like this. So think about, look around your room, uh, look around the classroom right now and see whose face is this and whose face is this, okay? And you can kind of give yourself a reminder. Uh, we're going to discuss the horizontal and all of its parts because the horizontal and the vertical have equal parts and same, the same uh, names, okay? Uh, for example, here, the major axis, the major axis has everything, okay? So again, this is called the major axis major axis and everything is along the major axis the focus the center and the vertex everything also on the major axis okay um the center is just like a circle center right circle center is known as hk so that's hk okay and we have foci two of them okay just like how in the belly button on the parabola we're going to put x's on the foci and the vertices is how wide, right? How horizontal uh, the, uh, the the ellipse stretches. Just like on the, uh, imagine on a vertical, right? It's gonna be here, it's gonna be here, and it's gonna be here and here, right? Same, okay? Same, okay? And this is also the focal axis, focal axis, okay? Focal axis line through the foci. So I'm gonna write that here. Line through foci. Psi, okay, line through the foci, the foci, uh, focal axes, and that's kind of new. I mean, some model textbooks don't talk about the focal axis, but I'm gonna put a little orange there for you. Okay, uh, let's see what else. Oh, okay. Well, we got the major axes, and we understand that everything, the foci, the vertices, and the center all um, lie on the uh, major axes. But we also have the other guy. How wide, right? We need to know how wide an ellipse is. So that's called the, not a major, but a minor axis. Some textbooks have different names, but just a minor axis is just good enough, okay? Again, who is shorter? That's obvious, right? Minor axis is definitely shorter than the major axis. I think these are a lot of these th things are just kind of common sense, okay? Um, foci is two focus put together. Um, and I guess something to think about is, I could ask you now, um, I, what happens to the ellipse when the foci get closer and closer together? Like right now it's about this apart, right, from the center. But what about the, what if the foci move like from here to here? 
right? What about if it keeps moving closer to the center? I wonder what happens to the shape of my lips. Okay, and we'll discover that as we move along. All right, let's move to the next uh, page. And that's going to be uh, a little bit more about, before we even like really start, let's just, I'm just introducing you the uh, ellipse, right? So ellipse with center HK. I'm going to focus on the HK center because obviously if the center is origin, then it becomes easier than when it's a different center, right? Okay, so standard. So it sort of looks like what equation to you? Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of it. It's, it doesn't, isn't it reminiscent of this formula here that you know so well? Ooh, like the circle. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. So I wonder how they're all related, okay? We'll discover that later, skaters, okay? Take a look. Like, I think this is the most important thing. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually, look at the notes the way I created it. You're right, this guy is this horizontal. So I'm gonna write the horizontal here. Okay, and this guy here is a little bit different. Take a look at what's different, and that's the vertical. So I've strategically built this note so then you can see the each side, okay? So again, this is of course split, right? Because you should see that this guy refers to this guy, this guy refers to this guy, but again, don't have to memorize any of this kind of stuff, except for this here. Don't have to memorize because it's obvious. And you're gonna see why the Pythagorean relation here is a little bit different from the parabola. The parabola, the c squared equals a squared minus b squared, right? But now the Pythagorean relation here in ellipse is a squared equals b plus b squared plus c squared, which is like your Pythagorean theorem, okay? Okay, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go into all that, but we can actually just kind of look at all this. Um, okay, well, what's different from this equation here? Let's take a look at this equation. What's different? Uh huh. What's different from horizontal and vertical? Look at the equations. Ah, you're so clever. You're right. Here, it starts with x and the a, which represents the major axis, right? The longer one is under the x. You're right. And here, you can see that the longer axis, which is the A, right, is along the Y axis. And that's how I remember it. Okay? So X and the Y, I mean, the, so X, X and the Y swapped places. Okay? Um, okay, let's, uh, let's move on. Okay. Um, you guys, I'm actually not going to, I'm going to share with you the actual, um, uh, notes as to why this is true why this is true but i'm gonna have you guys uh, look at the transcript of the notes not actually uh I'll put on video okay because i think it's gonna get a little long okay all right but you guys take a look and see if you uh can kind of uh see the relationship here and see why the folk graphs is y equals k and why it's x equals h right vertical versus horizontal and why is this oh sorry about that that's my uh, that's mr v calling me sorry about that guys he's a toilet sorry all sorts of things okay now vertices why it's the h that's moving well obviously because it's along the x and why is it the y along it's the y but honestly don't remember any of this i want you to actually make sense of it when we start okay well i'll see you in the next part see you